place where on thou standest is holy ground. I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. As I look back over my life, it's full of surprises. I never thought I would become friends with people in different countries all over the world. I see how God's hand guided me. When I began preaching many years ago, it was not with any thoughts that I'd be preaching to large audiences. Come to the cross. His gospel is for everyone. God has done this. Our country is in great need of a spiritual awakening. Well, there have been times that I've wept as I've gone from city to city and I've seen how far people have wandered from God. Of all the things that I've seen and heard, there's only one message that can change people's lives and hearts. There is a way if you come by the way of the cross. I want to tell people about the meaning of the cross. Not the cross that hangs on the wall or around someone's neck. We receive our freedom purchased by the ransom at the cross. But the real cross of Christ. The cross expresses the great love of God for man. It's scarred and blood-stained. His was a rugged cross. His real purpose for coming was to die. I know that many will react to this message, but it is the truth. And with all my heart, I want to leave you with the truth. God says, I love you. I love you. I love you with an everlasting love. That he loves you, willing to forgive you of all your sins. The cross is offensive because it confronts people. Even so, it's a confrontation that all of us must face. I look out across an audience when I stand up to preach, and I think of all the people with their different backgrounds and their various needs and I know that they are objects of God's mighty love. To the point that he gave his son, his only son, to die upon a cross. And the cross was the most terrible form of execution by the Romans for criminals. And Jesus endured all that in our place because of our sins. We deserve the cross. We deserve hell. We deserve judgment and all that that means. I know that there are many people that dispute that. People don't want to hear that they're sinners. To many people, it's an offense. The cross is offensive because it directly confronts the evils which dominate so much of this world. One reason that the cross is an offense to people is because it demands, it doesn't suggest, it demands a new lifestyle in all of us. Sin is a disease in the human heart. It affects the mind and the will and the emotions. Every part of our being is affected by this disease. How can we break this bondage? How can we be set free? God helps us break those chains. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. 
everything becomes new. It can make you a totally new person. On that cross, God was laying on Jesus our sins. They not only put nails in his hands, but before that, they scourged him. A Roman scourge was a terrible thing. They took whips and pellets on those whips and beat a person almost to death. And then they took that cross and made him carry the cross, which was in his weakened condition was almost impossible. But he carried that cross to a place outside of Jerusalem. And then they put nails in his hands. But that was not the real suffering. The real suffering is when he said, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In that terrible moment, he and God, the Father, were separated. He shed his blood, and the shedding of that blood carries with it God's very life. There is no other way of salvation except through the cross of Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The only way to the Father, Father God, is through his Son, Jesus Christ. Now why Jesus? He's the only one that was born into this world without sin. But more than that, he was the righteous one. And when you come to him, you're clothed in his righteousness. God no longer sees your sin. He no longer sees your own heart. He sees Jesus. When you come to Christ, you come by the way of repentance. Repent means to change, to change your way of living and turn from your sins and turn to Jesus Christ and say, I'm a sinner, I need forgiveness. And I know that you're the only one that can change me. Today, I'm asking you to put your trust in Christ. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer, sentence by sentence, after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you've died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins. I repent of my sins. I invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. He's alive! I've given my life not to a dead Christ, but to a living Christ. And he's given me a song to sing. He's given me a flag to follow. I have reason for existence. I know where I've come from. I know why I'm here. I know where I'm going. Do you?